Hello, today we're going to talk about chapter 5, Introduction to Valuations, the time value money. In finance, when we talk about cash flows, it is important to notice the timing of the cash flow. For example, suppose your grand-grandfather deposited $10 at 5.5% interest rate 200 years ago. So how much would this investment be worth today? We know this is going to be greater than original $10. Another example. How much do you need to set aside today if you are saving for your daughter's college education, which is about $150,000 to be used 17 years later? We know if we save today, due to earned interest payment, it's going to be less than $150,000. So in these two examples, the value of the cash flow is no longer the same as the, the absolute amount. So future value is a process to find out how much is an early money worth in the future? Due to gained interest payment, future value is going to be greater than the original investment. While present value is a process to find out how much is a future cash flow worth at early date. Present value tends to be a small amount. So in the previous example, your grand grandfather example is looking for future value. Your saving for college fund is looking for present value. The important distinguishing between simple versus compound interests. In the simple interest cases, the interest payment is based on the original investment only. So it never, never change, never grow. Well, in the compound interest case, the earned interest is going to also earn future interest payment. So as a result, the interest payment will keep growing. Look example of find out the future value of $100 invest for three years. In the case of 10% simple interest payment, every year, the interest amount is same $10. With three years goes by, your total interest payment earned is thirty dollars. The total future value is going to be a hundred plus thirty dollars. In the case of a compound interest payment, as you see, the interest interest payment is based on the previous total amount. The total amount is keep growing, so the annual annual interest payment keeps growing as well. So the amount in the account is actually um, original 100 times this compounding factor. We can rewrite, put them into a formula. We call future value formula. So the amount of an early cash flow deposit is based on the original investment multiply a future value factor. So as a result, the future value increases when you put more original deposit, or if you wait longer time, or if your account earns uh, higher returns. For example, in compare Jenny and David saving for retirement. In case one, David saved more money, in case two, David saved a longer time. In case three, David account has a higher rate. In both three cases, David is going to have a greater amount in his retirement fund. To find out future value calculations, we could use one of the three following approaches. The formula, financial calculator, 
and the factors. You can use the Appendix A1, A2 table, find out the commonly used factors. Let's find out how to solve calculation using BA2+. So all the time value money keys located at third row has N referred to number period, I refer to the period called interest, man, interest rate. By default, we will set PY into 1, so it means the company once per year period. PV is the present value. Future value is FV. Payment is a repeating periodical payment. This will be discussed in the future chapter 6. Let's find out um, BA2 plus calculator. So as you see, we have all the keys located in third row. How do we clear the numbers in these keys? So we will use a second clear time value money, which is FV. We don't use clear work. I'm going to show you how to change decimals. By default, right now, I have two decimals. If I want to change decimals, I'm going to press second and format. So it displays default decimal equal to two numbers, two places. So I'm going to change, for example, six. So click on enter. So now my calculator has six decimal places. You can change back if you want. I'm going to show you a very useful key how to store and recall numbers uh, for the previous calculations. So these are the STO RCL key. For example, I want to find out, um, do a calculation of these multiplication and add the results. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the calculation and I store these, these results into numerical keys from 1, 2, 3, 2, 9. I can use local function at the back. So let's do that. 12 times 34 equal kind for eight, right? So I'm going to store this result into Q1, okay? Now I'm going to also do second calculation, five, six, times seven, eight. I have another calculation, right, result. I'm going to store this result into two. Now, I'm if I'm, I'm going to look call result start from one, which, which is 408, plus the result I stored into key 2. So then I add together. So the result total sum is 4776. So I want you to pause your calculator, pause the screen, and practice find the result of this calculation using historical keys. Practice finding future values. So you have a thousand dollars and deposit in tens birthday and the bank give you five percent compound rate every year. Now you are 20, 20 years old. So how much has the money grown into now? So you say for 10 years from 10 to 20. So you can use formula we also we can use calculator. So let's do the calculator. Let's change back decimal to two. Okay, so we have a 10 years, 10 into N, and we have 5%, we enter 5 instead of 0.05, 5i, y. Then we have a thousand, original deposit a thousand. Here I'm going to put negative into PV. So in the financial calculator, they want to know the signs. So the cash inflow, cash outflow will be different. 
So in any transaction, this always involve involve a uh, own cash inflow, cash outflow. So so we as a habit, uh, we will put a negative in front of a PV. So that result will come out positive. We call this sign convention. It's just a pure signs. You can use absolute value if we are using formula. So and the three informations. Now we are ready to compute future value. Let's click on CPT. Click on F3. So we got 10 years later, this money go into 16, 28, and 89. So I would like you to pause the screen and take out the financial calculator, do both for, uh, formula and and the financial calculator, right? So the answer for this hi. See if you can verify your answer here. I'm going to talk about uh, how do we understand how much more money do we earn using compound interest compared to a simple interest. Right? So, for example, if you have this $10 invested, uh, assuming simple interests, so at, at the end of the to, to, at the end of the two hundred years, the total amount is only one twenty. Okay. However, in the previous practice, if we use compounding interest, so we know we're going to have so much more. We have uh, something like four hundred forty-seven thousand to one eighty-nine dollars eighty-four cents. So how much more are we earning, assuming compound interests? We just look at the difference. So the difference is also called the effect of the compounding. To find out the effect of compounding, we will do three steps, future value for compounding interest, future value for simple interest, and then look at the difference. So I want you to do another practice. Okay, I have already given you the key numbers here. I want you to find out, can you find out the correct answer as well? So the difference called the effect of com compounding. From future value formula, we can rearrange and rewrite it as a present value formula. So to find out present value of a future cash flow depends on the future cash flow and the time and discount factor. So this discount factor is tend to be uh, equal one less or equal than one. So as you see, when we receive a greater future cash flow, or if we received in a sh earlier date, or if the compound interest rate is uh, is lower, we're going to have a greater present value. So in the case of Jenny and David, in case one, David is going to receive twenty thousand. So David, the present value of this cash flow is a greater. Case number two, Jenny and David. Uh, David will receive 40 years later while Jenny is 30 years later. An early cash flow was a lot more. So in this case, Jenny has a greater print value. Case three, uh, Jenny's account is only 5%, David is 7%. So Jenny is going to have a greater print value due to uh, um, higher discount factor. Similarly, we uh, have uh, up to three different approaches to find out print value. Um, formula, calculator, and factors. Again, factors are available in, in appendix A1, A2. Let's find out print value. You can use discount factor in the formula and we can also use uh, use financial calculator. So I'm going to do the calculator step. I'm going to first press second FB. I'm going to clear the number. Then this is our saving for college educations. How much should we put aside today for our uh, $150,000 to be used in 17 years? 
the account on 78%. So M, the cash flow will be received 17 years later. The account of 8% rate, we put 8 instead of 0 0.08. And the money is the money, that 150,000 is the money received in the future. So that's the future value. I'm going to put a negative in front future. So the number will come out, come out positive. I press, press compute PV. So we only need to put down 40,550 today. So after 17 years, uh, company interest payment, we are able to money to grow into 150,000. I would like you to pause and practice on your own for looking for this um, million dollar lock lottery money. To find out the rate of investment or investment term, it is very very similar and uh, you going to you could use a formula or you can use uh, the financial calculator. In this case, financial calculator seems a bit easier. For example, looking for rate of investment. Your investment of 5,000 have grown into 9,000 in four years. So what is the implied rate of return? Use the financial use the financial formula or financial calculator. We found it's fifteen point eight three. So how do we do from um, financial calculator? Uh, within four years, your money original five thousand. We put a negative in front of PV, growing to nine thousand. If we then we are ready to compute the rate. Okay, so in this case, very important you put negative in front of PV or FV. That's why financial calculator does not recognize. Again, uh, there's another example for you to practice. In the old days, without the financial calculator, uh, we have a shortcut to find out how long does it take to double your money. So it's called the rule of 72. Basically, we use uh, 72 divided by the rate to find the, the, the time. If, for example, it takes you to six years to double your money, the implied rate is 12%. Let's practice one example looking for the number period. If your grand grandparents give you a thousand at your tenth birthday, the money grow into two nine fifty two sixteen cents, and the account give you seven percent. So how much? Is, how how old are you today? So this question, uh, we need to find how long does it take to for the money to grow into this amount? Then at original ten starting year which ten tenth birthday. So let's do that. Again clear. We have um seven percent rate. Original money is a thousand. Again I put a negative in front PV. Then we have two nine fifty two point sixteen and into F V then compute the time and okay, 16 years. So add 10, which is 26. Right. Very, very similar. So I want you to practice for looking for a number period. So that's all for chapter 5. So basically, we talk about the concepts of looking, the concept of time value money. The difference between simple interest and uh, compound interest that affect compounding and find the PV, FV, or the rate of investment or terms for a single cash flow. That's all for this chapter.